What's going on guys? Briar Rabbit here. I want to be perfectly clear at the beginning of this video that there are a ton of story spoilers in this trailer. Things that we had no idea about or we had big questions about knowing what we know about Destiny 2 so far are answered or shown in this video or in this trailer uh, that could definitely be considered story spoilers for Destiny 2. So be aware of that. Uh, if you don't want any story spoilers for Destiny 2, stop, because that's what this video is all about. So with that being said, we're going to watch this trailer at full speed, and then I'll be back, and we're going to slow it down to about half speed and watch it together and talk about it. So with that being said, let's take a look at the trailer. The city is secure. Those who fled are being hunted, and those foolish enough to remain have been executed. Do you see all that I have done? The war is over, and we've lost. Our numbers will continue to dwindle. We can no longer protect ourselves, much less the survivors. We all know what needs to be done. Get up close and personal with golf. Put a bullet in his head. Then maybe eat a sandwich. <laughs> An outright assault is doomed to fail. There will be no coming back. It's worth it. If the Red Legion want war, give them war. Humanity never deserves power. I am God, and I alone am worthy. All right, guys, let me put the webcam back on, and we're going to slow this thing down and uh, really take a look at this thing at a much slower rate. I got to say, I really do like this uh, trailer quite a bit. It's a fun trailer. It's interesting. It gets you excited for the war upcoming, and we did definitely get some major uh, plot points revealed to us in this trailer that, you know, frankly, were up in the air before. So let's start off. We'll start off at slow speed. Let me mute it as well so we don't have to hear it stuttering along. But right away, you'll see a cabal approaching uh, Gaul. He's got a cape. We think this is the console. We think this is going to be Gaul's advisor. Whether he'll be a strike boss, a raid boss, or maybe connective tissue to a cabal story along the road, we don't know. But then we get to see that they've actually captured the speaker, and that is huge news. So obviously, we saw that the speaker was no longer in his little speaker tower during the homecoming mission of the beta. And, and what you see here is that Gaul actually has captured the speaker. And while he's talking to the speaker, he explains that, you know, the people who have run away are being hunted down. The people who are stupid enough to stay and fight have been executed. But he has kept the speaker here. So why is he keeping the speaker alive? Does he need something from the speaker? Does he just want to gloat over the, you know, the capture of the tower, the capture of the traveler? My guess is he does need something from the speaker. Either he needs a way to communicate with the traveler or he needs a way to unlock the power of the traveler. And he needs that from the speaker. So at some point, uh, we're going to probably have to go and rescue the speaker from Gaul's clutches. And that should be pretty interesting. 
Uh, it was cool to see the speaker in some other uh, aspect besides just as the wild, wise old advisor. And it'll be interesting to see him and his interactions with Gaul. So let's keep going here. Um, you can really see that speaker mask from the front here. Even though the outfit is a little bit different, seemingly, uh, you can definitely see that it is the speaker from that mask up in the front. Of course, we have the Bungie logo. Ooh, Bungie Activision. Ooh. <laughs> so well, another thing I really like about this is that you get to see this kind of guerrilla war happening. Is It feels like you are fighting alongside not only the tower, uh, like your your vanguard mentors, but also everybody in the city seems to be fighting. This is the uh, kind of an approach on the tower that we've seen in the homecoming mission. Uh, you can see the traveler off in the distance. It's Zavala here. Clearly, clearly getting amped up to rumble. Clearly. I really like this scene, too. The graphical fidelity of Destiny 2 in the cutscenes, and, like, theoretically, that's a live cutscene, right? Let's go back just a little bit here. Theoretically, that's like an in-game engine cutscene because it doesn't look like one of the pre-rendered ones, and our Guardian is here right there. Uh, so my guess is that this is an in-game cutscene, and just the fidelity of it is incredible. Whether this is running on PC, PlayStation, Xbox, who knows, uh, but it just looks absolutely incredible. The, you know, the, this I don't know what these are ribbons of some sort, whether they're tethers or who knows what they are. Just look awesome back there, and the coloring and just everything about Destiny Two just looks phenomenal so far as far as graphical uh, fidelity goes. Here we can see this. I believe is that shard of the Traveler that we've heard of so much. This looks like a catch, uh, some kind of fallen vehicle. Uh, maybe they're going to try and. You know, grab some technology off of the traveler. Who knows what that's going to be? Uh, but we do know that that shard of a traveler is going to play into the story somehow. Here we can see some residents of the city and some guardians walking through probably the city. That shotgun is badass. That is just a cool scene. We got two guardians in the foreground and our guardian just like reloading a shotgun, looking at the city, looking at this battle taking place with the traveler. Already, we we're already cut off from the light because that traveler's got the clamp around it. It's a very badass scene. I like that quite a bit. Ready to rumble and then walking into the fray. That's very cool stuff. We can see some of the armor there. We see this warlock armor. This is a warlock armor that I've never seen before. It looks very cool with this kind of very, uh, very, I don't know, primitive looking metallic structure on it. We can see the dead orbit uh, shoulder piece with the netting across it. Uh, we have seen this Titan breastplate before. I believe we've seen that armor as well. Uh, the Hunter's um, helmet looks pretty cool there as well. Keep it going here. Now, this is one of those things, right? Is we just start seeing these, these scenes of our guardians and our group kind of moving through the streets stealthily in the dark. This is not how guardians move in Destiny 1. But in Destiny 2, it looks to be like this is going to be much more guerrilla war much more of a fight for survival. Uh, it's We're not necessarily the most powerful force on Earth anymore, and that's very interesting. Uh, here we can see that we've got some Guardians here. We're here with Cade 6. This is probably Hawthorne over here. We've also got some normal people. These are not Guardians. They're not in full armor. They look like just residents of the, the last city with weapons, and they've taken up arms. They are not, you know, they're not content with just having the Guardians do the fighting for them. Residents of the city are here as well. Here we see Hawthorne in the bag that you can pre-order if you'd like. Uh, and she's just kind of peeking around this corner with a sniper rifle. Again, just has a very guerrilla warfare-like uh, feel to it. Whether or not they can actually keep that going from the cutscene to the actual gameplay, I don't know. Uh, they've done it before. Halo 2 had quite a bit of... Uh, spots where you had to sneak around with your sniper rifle because you were greatly outnumbered and you were, you had a group of people sneaking around. You're sniping them off and trying to hit them by surprise before they were alerted to your presence. You know, the Halo series did a good job of that kind of stuff, especially in the beginning. So maybe in Destiny 2 we'll get more, more of a feel for being part of a team, being part of a unit, and not necessarily being the most powerful force. Here we can see the Cabal. Coming at us, Zavala leading the force against the Cabal. Again, just very badass looking. And again, we can see residents like normal humans taking up arms, not just allowing the Guardians to fight their battles for them. 
I find to be very interesting. This is a cool ass scene. Zavala just goes ham on this guy. There's a bit of a cut here. You see that he gets to the barrel of the of whatever weapon that is up against the uh, the cabal's head and then kicks it. <laughs> I don't know if that thing shot in the process there. Uh, here you see some sparrow racing. Uh, very cool. Not sparrow racing, but racing along on their sparrows toward toward danger. Very cool indeed. And you can see uh, you can see Ikora Ray actually shooting a shotgun from her sparrow. Whether this just happens in a cutscene, probably, right? We're probably not going to be able to fire our weapons from our sparrows. We could, though. That would be a lot of fun, running over a cabal with our sparrow, or Ikora is. Very cool indeed. We get some more dialogue with our mentors. And another shot of sparrows, this time racing across a bridge. Now, uh... This is pretty interesting, right? Is we we're seeing some definitely vex architecture. I'm gonna kind of go back here. This definitely looks like a vex doorway, something you'd see in like the vault of glass. I thought this is the vault of glass, but definitely reminiscent of it. And then you got these like laser walls. Uh, I did hear see somebody on Twitter saying that uh, this guardian is holding a lightsaber. I think that's actually the laser wall there spinning around. I don't think it actually is a lightsaber. Not that there won't be uh, energy swords in the game. We just haven't seen any yet. Uh, again, we got some new armor. I really like this armor with the carbon fiber look to it. I think that is really nice. This Omalon pistol, all in white, looks very good as well. We'll move along here. Got a rocket launcher doing its dirty business. Blowing up some... Were those Scions or Vex? I think those are Scions, actually. Right? Let's take a look at that. Yeah, those are probably Scions. Yeah. <laughs> Sentinel bringing the shield in, protecting his allies. These weapons all look very cool. That armor looks pretty new to me with uh, more of like a almost a flight looking face mask. And you got the tank. He's running along the tank, indicating that possibly one of his allies is driving that tank, which could be very cool. I want to know more about this tank, to be honest with you. I want to drive the tank, Bungie, for sure. We got the Arc Strider coming in. Doing his little slide, slibbity slide. And this is another scene from the homecoming mission right at the beginning of the game. Gaul is, I think Gaul, to be honest with you, is probably the most compelling bad guy we've gotten out of Destiny 1 or 2 yet. Uh, here we're fighting some Vex, looking very badass. We got some of the Cabal Dogs doing some dirty business there. That is, I believe, an interceptor tank that we've played with before, the Cabal version of a tank um, that we've played with before. I'm really more interested in the human tank at this point. We've got a Guardian on a pike. Doing a little spin move there. Coming in, doing some damage against some Vex. The Vex look very cool in Destiny 2. Like the, the style of them has not changed, but they're definitely more embellished. They're definitely more detailed. And uh, they look very cool. Dude, is that a shotgun? Or was that a line rifle? Let me take a look at that again. Maybe that was a line rifle. Yeah, it seems to be a line rifle. Okay, that's a very cool weapon. Line rifles could be very good. We'll have to see. Got a warlock putting down some heel heels for his buddies there. I like that warlock armor too. I want to take another look at that. You don't get much of a look at it. Oh, there we go. That's some really cool armor on that warlock. The Titan doesn't look too bad behind him either. I wonder how shaders will work. Is that Cade 6 on a sparrow? I want to take a look at that. Was that Cade 6 on that sparrow? Could be. Take another one more time on this thing. Really get a look at his face, do you? That could be him. I'm not sure, though. I wouldn't want to say for sure it's him. Reminiscent, for sure. And Kate 6 doing damage with that golden gun once again. In another cutscene. All in all, I got to say, this scene is amazing right here. You just get a sense of scale of how big 
this Vex boss is. It looks like a, just an enormous hobgoblin, right? Just an enormous hobgoblin. And you got these two puny little guardians going up against him. It's just, the sense of scale here, I think, is fantastic. And it really amps me up to get in there. You know, it just, it's a very exciting portion of the trailer. I mean, that thing is gigantic. It, you, know, you don't often get this sense of scale where you actually get to see how big your guardian is compared to how big the boss he's fighting is. Usually, you're pretty far away from these guys doing damage from a distance. That is absolutely enormous. Absolutely enormous. And then we got Cade making a funny at the very end. So all in all, I got to say, it's a really interesting uh, it's a really interesting trailer. And I find that while it is a little spoilery, there's more, there's more information given to the story than I possibly would have liked. Uh, it did get me more excited to play Destiny 2. And that is the function of a trailer, right? A, a trailer is marketing material. And... It performed its function well. After watching this trailer, I was more excited to play the PvE portion of Destiny 2 because this story looks intense. I want to know what is the console's relationship with Gaul. I want to know what are they doing to the speaker and why have they captured him instead of just killing him. That's really interesting to me. This is going to be a lot of fun. I really can't wait. Of course, here they are. The PC uh, beta coming on, or I'm sorry, the PC version of Destiny 2 coming on October 24th. Uh, so advertising that a little bit. And then, of course, the main release of the game on consoles is September 6th. Uh, right around the corner at this point. Just absolutely. We're days away. We're less than two weeks away. Or we're exactly two weeks away, I think, actually. Two weeks. Two weeks. And then we'll be playing Destiny 2. That is insane. That is insane. So that's going to do it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hit that like button if you liked the video. Hit subscribe if you're new to the channel. And I'll see you guys next time.